Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian Otto here. This is going to be my tutorial for all of the current skips, glitches, or tricks in the control speedrun. This is going to cover everything that wouldn't be immediately obvious uh, to a new runner, I think. It's not going to be covering a lot of fights, but this will cover all the skips and the glitches and all the stuff that you, I think, need to know for the run. So please enjoy. So the first trick of the run is known as water cooler jump or water cooler skip. Uh, it looks uh, about as easy as it, as it is, honestly. There's a little bit of nuance to this trick, but ultimately it's just going to come down to approaching the water cooler at the right angle and then uh, mashing jump. Uh, I have jump bound to scroll wheel down, as you can see on my uh, no board there. So once we skip the cutscenes, um, you're going to want to be holding front left out of the cutscene. So I'll be holding front left here and then I press sprint. Then once you get to the water cooler, I like to approach it kind of in the middle between the trash can and the water cooler here. So you want Jesse to mantle to the left side like that. And then once she mantles like that, uh, you can actually just mass jump and uh, it should get you up on top of the water cooler. So um, in full, it would look like running at the water cooler, mass jump, and then she gets up. And then as soon as I get up, I'm just going to crank my camera to the right and then start mashing sprint. So the next trick of the run, or the next two tricks of the run, uh, come almost back to back. Uh, this next one is called the ladder jump, and this trick is extremely nuanced. Um, it's very, very precise in a really strange way, and in a way that I don't quite understand all the way yet. So after you come across uh, that little pipe, you're going to want to come over to the right side here, and this is the ladder. You're going to be jumping from this ladder up to that rail right there. Uh, this is going to skip walking up the stairs and across the bridge. Uh, this saves a significant amount of time, so it is very important that you learn this trick. The most important thing I would say with this is you want to make sure you're jumping off the highest part of the ladder. Jesse can and will mantle lower parts of the ladder, so you want to jump off the highest point. Um, and then once I'm up on top of the ladder, I want to take at least about a half step forward and then I'm going to jump and hold front right and then crank my camera to the right as fast as possible because you want to get Jessie's body turned so that she grabs the rail there. It's totally possible that she won't grab and that you'll miss. This trick is really, really annoying to set up. Um, so what I like to do is I'll take kind of a wide route along the right side, get to the ladder, jump, hold right, and then you should just mantle up. Um, something that you should be doing during this is pressing jump again. Uh, while you're in the air. Uh, sometimes Jesse won't grab a ledge unless you're pressing jump. And pressing jump can influence her to further grab a ledge. This next trick is surely one of the most difficult in the beginning of the game. Um, I'm going to grab this little red container right here to clear out these guys. Or at least one of them. And once you get through here, you just have to kill this guy to drop the red uh, the red mist. So when you come through here, uh, this you're going to have this little blue box right here. I'm going to pick it up and instantly throw it. You're aiming between that pipe and the little speakers there. So I usually, you don't want it to rise at all. Uh, you'll have the best chance of it being in a good position if you just grab it and then instantly throw it, about like that. Um, generally speaking, you want it to land right there, but if it lands over to the right, that's fine. From there, you're going to want to grab a second blue box. It can really be any of these. I tend to just use this one. Um, so you're going to be wanting to place this box, usually, like I said, about in between the speakers here and the pipe. And so it's possible that this can fall in a, that this first block that you throw can fall in a position where you can actually use it to get up. But in the event that you don't, you can grab a, a block and reposition it, uh, pick it up, and then press interact again to drop if, if need be. In any case, once that's there, you'll, you'll grab this other block and then uh, hop up onto this one. Um, what I usually do is I'm going to swing my camera around to the right so I can influence this block to get stuck right up there like that. Um, and so generally you want it a little bit at an angle. Um, if it's if it's just flat, I find it's a little bit harder to do this clip. So what's going to happen is you're going to jump up and drop the box. And when you drop the box, it's going to displace Jesse upward. And doing so will actually clip her straight up through the floor. Um, there's a lot of different uh, things that can go wrong here. Um, so you can uh, jump at the wrong angle, or Jesse can end up bonking her head on the block. Um, the best way you can influence this is to have it right above your head, and then uh, drop it as soon as you jump. So once you're there, you're going to want to keep pressing jump. I usually hold forward too, because when you're inside a block, you have a better chance of flipping through the floor if you are uh, holding forward or holding a direction. So all in one motion, we'll grab it, swing around, get it above our head, drop and mass jump. And doing so correctly should clip you through the floor like this, which skips the boss fight in this room. Give this one a lot of practice, this is not easy. It's also acceptable to put the box right next to the wall. Um, it doesn't have to be far away from the wall. Some people find it easier when it's right next to the wall because the this block will kind of sit at an angle easier. And you don't have to hold forward, sometimes you can just drop it and clip right through. 
Directorial Override is one of the most difficult levels in the entire speedrun. There are a lot of different wall clips and tricks that we're going to be doing in this level specifically. Uh, first things first, you're going to want to make sure that you have bought Launch 1 and uh, Launch 2 and Energy 1. The first trick we'll be doing is one of the most iconic in the speedrun. This trick is not necessary to complete the level, and there will be two different branching paths depending on whether or not this trick actually activates. Um, this trick uh, is not necessarily RNG, but we do not know the factors that go into it activating. This trick is known as Slidey McGunny. I will show you both the routes for having Slidey and not having Slidey. So Slidey McGunny is activated when you overlap two menus and then play a video file. Overlapping two menus looks like this. And so once you're in this state, you've entered the glitched state. And so from here, uh, you want to navigate over to the collectibles uh, by using either your uh, Q or E keys or whatever keys you have that move left and right. You can also open up this page directly by pressing the N key, but for whatever reason, I'm more confident just opening up the regular menu by pressing G. And then once you're here, you will open up a multimedia file and then play it. And then once here, I would uh, navigate my mouse over on top of the maintenance corridor where I want to go, and then I would press G, and then I would press Enter. But I'm not going to press Enter because I want to explain how this works. Anytime you're activating an elevator normally, you can activate it from the other side without actually going in. You want to approach the elevator at a diagonal camera angle, and then kind of move to the right, and you can activate it through the wall. Activating this trick uh, requires you to bring up this menu, which is G for me, at the exact same time that this menu on the right, the F key, uh, brings up this menu. So uh, it may be frame perfect. I believe it's easier to do on lower frame rates. Um, but I usually try and like look a little bit back to the to the left. And then from here, I'll be, uh, I'm using the little circle that appears on the hold to interact to tell me when I should be pressing the G key. So I normally uh, get this first try in a run every now and again, but sometimes it takes me two or even three attempts to get this. So there's the glitched state. Then we navigate over to collectibles, multimedia, play it. G enter, and you don't want to you don't want to click, you don't want to do anything else, you don't want to hit escape because if you do, it will soft lock the game. So this is Slidey McGunny. You're a little gun that slides around on the ground, and the reason that we do this is because it actually unlocks your your camera. It uh, affects your view model. So if you look, when I look to the left, my, my camera is actually going through the wall, and that is the entire reason that we do this trick. So now I'll show you the route to get to Ati with Slidey McGunny, and then we will show the route afterward. When you have Slidey McGunny, I find the best thing to do here is going to be to grab the fridge that lies up in this room. Getting out of bounds with these fridges is much easier than most other objects in the game. I'll usually come over kind of in between this gap between the pipe and the fence here, and then hop up. And once you're up here, you're going to want to be looking over toward where the fridge is. You're going to jump and wait for it to highlight like that. And then once uh, it's there, I'm going to be grabbing the fridge and then looking directly left into the corner. And then ideally the fridge will pull out through the window and then through this little fence here. And then it will be next to me. If it doesn't pull all the way out, you're going to want to drop it while still looking here. You don't want to look back in that direction. And the fridge should be sitting right next to the fence. So we'll jump, grab, look. There we go. And the fridge is right here. So once the fridge is here, you'll throw it down the hallway. And this is the big reason that we use Slidey McGunny right here. So I'm going to pull this little phone off the wall because it will affect my camera going through the wall here. And I'll stand about right where the phone was. And then once I'm here, I'm going to look to the left until I get my camera right here. And you see how I can open the door through the wall? This opens the doorway into the final room of this mission. But we don't want to go in there yet because we have some triggers we need to hit still. So from here, I'll take the fridge and I'm going to toss it down the hallway. You don't want to run while holding an object with launch because it's slower. Though if you do have to move while holding an object, you should be uh, you should be bunny hopping rather than just running. So once we get here, I'm going to be looking in this left corner. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to be riding the fridge up into the corner and ideally it will push me out of bounds here. So there are quite a few things that can go wrong with this. Uh, you can actually fall to the left of this wall and you'll fall back down into that room, which is not a run killer, but it is slow. As well, you can sometimes randomly be numed, as we call it, to the middle of this level in the, uh, to the 000 location coordinates. Though that is uh, kind of random when that happens. I have a second launch key that is bound to my left alt, where my thumb sits next to the spacebar. And so uh, that way I can pick something up and then also mass jump using scroll wheel down and I can also move my, uh, my arrow keys freely. So generally speaking with this fridge, you want either this side right here to be facing you, 
or you want the reverse side right here to be facing you. The uh, open side is definitely a bit easier to get out of bounds with, though the other side works as well. What you don't want is for the edge to be facing you like that. So sometimes it is acceptable to wait for it to rotate to a position you want. And then once I get it right here, I'm going to place it up against the wall. And you can see it's already carrying me upward, even though I'm just running on it. I'm not even jumping on it. I'm just running onto it and it's carrying me upward. So um, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to be looking, I'm going to be pressing kind of uh, front right. I'll be pressing my W and D keys and then I'm, I'll be mashing jump and then slowly looking to the right. And then once you're there, you can actually drop the fridge and it will place you right out of bounds. Now, once you're here, we'll be going over the top and you're just going to want to run straight ahead here all the way across. And uh, from here, you're going to jump down into this little uh, down into this little room right here. This is an essential trigger that you need to complete the rest of this mission. So once you run into this room, the fight will start. I've already cleared this room for the sake of the tutorial, but normally there's a fight that starts here. Once it does, you're going to want to run down here and you're going to aim at this forklift. So you'll shoot the gas tank on this forklift once, and then we're going to be running along the, to the left right here. Now once it explodes, there's this little kind of like engine or the chassis portion of the forklift. Uh, this is going to be something that you see coming back later on in the run. We'll be using this particular prop to clip out of bounds multiple times. So once you're here, you're going to grab this guy and you'll come in this room here. I usually will be B hopping if I'm having to having to move with it. There's usually a guy that spawns in here and I'll throw this at him. You don't have to do that though. Once you're in here, we're going to be jumping up on this little cluster of pipes here. And you want the forklift above you. Generally speaking, what I'll do is I'll kind of push the forklift all the way up to the wall. And then I'll move back and to the right a little bit. So I'm kind of diagonally behind it. And then once I'm here, I'm going to jump and drop the forklift again by pressing the interact key. And if you just mass jump and then usually press a direction, usually if you press left or right uh, or backward, you don't want to press forward here, you'll go straight out of bounds. This one can be a little bit tricky with Slidey McGunny. It's easier when you don't have Slidey. This particular section right here is very, very annoying. So we can actually get to where we need to uh, already, which is just right over there. But in order to hit the trigger to activate the mission where we get evade, we have to get up onto that platform first so we can hit the trigger that lies up there. So there's this middle beam right here that actually gives us a little bit of a height boost, as you can see. We'll be jumping up onto this. And then there's this other beam that'll stick out from the wall here. We'll be jumping up onto that as well. So the first thing we want to do is I usually angle my camera upward so I can see the underside of the beam. And you don't want to run under this thing because then you'll instantly clip and bounds and you'll soft lock. So I usually stand about right here. I'm going to jump and hold forward. Then I'm mantled up onto the, onto the platform here. That can be really tricky. Now, once you're here, getting up onto this ledge is a lot harder than it might seem. Uh, Jesse really, really, really wants to mantle over the ledge and put you back in the room. Just due to the geometry on this ledge, it isn't actually flat like this. So what I'll do here is I'll, uh, as I'm going to sprint toward the ledge, I'll press jump once, and then I'm going to turn my camera to the left and mass jump. Now, they'll usually get you up here, and this is the ultimate location where you need to be. There are a few different mantle animations that you can get. You can't see the animations because of the sliding McGunny glitch, but... Uh, generally speaking, it's jump once and then look to the left and mass jump. And that should usually get you up there, though sometimes you can't and you'll have to course correct. If you go a little bit too far, you can kind of look back to the left and get over there. That trick is actually very tricky. So the trigger that you have to hit is just over this little beam here. It's this box. This is where the trigger is. So once you stand here, you can take a sharp left and continue down this hallway. It looks like there's nothing here, but trust me, there is actually something here. And then once we get here, we're going to run over to this ledge right here. We'll jump up. And then as soon as you jump up here, you're going to want to look to the right and hold forward and mass jump. So we'll get up here, look to the right, hold forward, mass jump. And that actually puts you farther ahead on this little platform than you would normally be and also prevents you from having to suffer through a landing animation. So immediately after the horse here, we have a trick that is known as the Astral Boink. You'll notice I have my player model now. This is because my game crashed during the recording of this tutorial. Uh, but these strats are exactly the same both with Slidey and without for this segment, so we'll just show you this without Slidey McGunny. This is going to skip a movement puzzle right here. This saves about 5 seconds. You don't need to do this, but it is fastest to do it. I'll be jumping from this platform over to this one here. And I'll be going around the left side of this big pillar. And you want to go farther to the left than you think you need to. So I'll be going 1, 2, 3, diagonal left, and I mass jump, dash forward mass jump and then again far left dash forward and you want to land right here you want to avoid this little block right here 
because if you do hit it, it'll actually warp you back to the bottom right there, and you, and you don't want that to happen. Then once you're up here, I'll be I'll be running up and I'll dash forward, and then from here I'll dash forward again twice, and I want to get down to the bottom right here because otherwise, if you don't get down to the bottom, uh, this bridge right here actually won't spawn. So you need to get to the very base of that platform before you continue onto this area here. So it's essential that you wait till the screen fades in before you start this, so you can see your jump. This trick is cycle based, so you need to get over to the left side here before uh, for this cycle with this this pillar right here. For some reason, due to the way that the uh, your player model interacts with these walls or even invisible walls, you'll kind of get zipped upward like so. And you can see I can even just kind of jump back and forth like this with these if I need to. So you want to go really, really, really far left. I'm going to be doing dash, 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 hold jump, and then forward, and then usually dash once or twice. And then once you get here, you can jump dash and you're up. And again, you want to avoid this platform, otherwise you'll get ported back to the beginning. That port back to the beginning will only happen on the first cycle. It won't happen uh, if you were to die and then attempt this again. As soon as the cycle starts going, you're fine. But if you miss that, then you'll get ported back here. This trick is a little bit easier than it looks, though it will require a little bit of practice. Now, if you had Slidey McGunny here, what you would do is you would dash down this direction, and then you would use the camera to open this door from the other side. But if you don't have Slidey McGunny, what you're going to want to do is run to about this pillar, or this block right here, which will hit a trigger, which will uh, cause this red wall that will normally be present here to despawn. And then once you're here, you'll dash over to the left and then go talk to Ati. And then once you've uh, finished talking to Ati, all you need to do is walk across the little staircase there up into the red room with the silhouette. And then from there, you simply just quit to menu and you have successfully hit the trigger. Good job. Quitting to menu will put you back into the elevator. And from there, you can complete the mission. So let's go over the strat here for when you don't get Sliding McGunny coming out of the elevator. This one is a little bit different. And there are a couple different methods, actually, that will allow you to uh, get through this mission. So uh, we're not going to unlock this door yet, because we don't have the ability to look through the wall. And unlocking it first is slower. So we're going to be doing this room last, just like with Sliding McGunny. However, we'll be getting in that room in a different way. So once we get here, you're going to have to just kill these three guys. I usually grab this explosive one, kill this guy, and then I'll just shoot these next two. Usually faster than this. So now once you're here, there are multiple methods that will allow you to get up above this ceiling here. You can use this barrel right here, and uh, you can get on top of the box, or you can use that barrel over there with that pillar, but I'll show you this one first. So with this barrel, you want to get it uh, so it's standing vertically like this, and you want to get it up against the wall, about like that. And then once the barrel's there, you want to align Jesse so that she sits almost perfectly underneath the center of the barrel, and you want her to clip into the barrel like that. Um, the barrel can be at an angle, uh, a little bit of an angle, that's acceptable, but it's possible that Jesse will push it behind her like so. So generally you want to uh, stand far enough back so you can maneuver the barrel over to the right, and then you want to move Jesse uh, underneath the barrel without it moving too much if possible. You can kind of get the barrel stuck on the ceiling, then move Jesse with the barrel, and that works too. Then once you're here, you want to get Jesse underneath it, and then jump and drop the barrel. And ideally, when performed correctly, you should go through the floor, and then you'll end up right here. This trick is uh, a lot sillier than it might look, and this is one you're going to want to practice a lot, just because the barrel is very finicky on when it does and doesn't allow you to clip through. The alternative method here will use this barrel in this location right here. So this barrel, you're going to uh, want to line up next to the corner of this pipe here, and this can be a bit more finicky to work with. Uh, I prefer the box strat, though there are people that prefer the this corner strat. So once the barrel's aligned properly, we'll drop it and then jump up. I usually hold forward, which allows me to mantle up. And then from here, we'll jump into this room. And then it's business as usual, just like I showed you with Sliding McGunny. You'll come in here and grab the forklift to skip the fight. So if you got Slidey McGunny, you won't need to do this to access the final control room. But if you didn't get Slidey McGunny, it's going to be grabbing the fridge, just like uh, just like if you did get Slidey McGunny. <laughs> so we'll come over here, it's the same strategy to get the fridge. And so once you get down here, we're actually going to be clipping out of bounds, just like we did down the hallway there. But instead, this time our end goal is going to be through this ceiling here. So the same rules apply. 
where you generally want uh, the long side of the fridge facing you, not the short side. And then we'll be running into the wall and just mashing jump, and that gets us straight out of bounds. And then once you're here, you can actually complete the fight. And once the fight's over, you will be allowed to complete the mission by activating the final cutscene. If and only if you have uh, hit all the triggers here. This next skip comes at the beginning of Old Boys Club, and it's known as Two Fight Skip because you skip two fights. Uh, make sure before entering Old Boys Club that you have launch maxed out. From the beginning when this mission opens, uh, you're going to be setting up for the skip, basically, in energy management. So you'll run out here, I'm going to do five dashes. Usually not hitting that couch. You'll run up the stairs here to this little final lip where it goes up, and from here you'll be jumping, and then you go one, two, three, four. And then from here I'll be jumping and then meleeing through the wall. If you don't jump, normally the wall doesn't break all the way, which is annoying. And so now we're going to need to get out of bounds. So to get out of bounds, we'll be using this fridge or whatever you want to call it right here. Now this can be pretty tricky. The main thing that you want to keep in mind with this fridge is that you want the fridge to be kind of tilted at an angle before you attempt this. So I'll grab it and then move it into the corner like this. And if it's at an angle like this, that's usually a good sign because when you actually move, the object is again going to displace you upward through the ceiling. And then sometimes you'll get in this position where you'll be kind of going into the fridge, but the game won't be pushing you out of bounds. And the only advice I can offer here is to just keep jumping and kind of holding different directions. Sometimes it'll push you out and sometimes it won't. But primarily, as long as you have the fridge at a little bit of an angle, it, you'll usually have more success with, success with this, like so. So that's what you're looking for, right there. So sometimes you'll fall down there, sometimes you'll come up here. I'll show you the strats uh, to get across to this next segment, no matter which way you fall. When you do end up landing up here, I, I'm going to dash twice so I land on the very edge of that mold right there. Now this can be pretty tricky because the game needs to load in the next part of the the next part of this level for you so that you don't fall back and bounce. So I'll jump and then dash twice. I'll land here and I'm going to jump and then dash again, dash again, and then dash a third time. So I want to land right here and if you usually land behind this portion, the game will actually throw you back and bounce right there. So it's important that you land here. Um, and, and at least try and land on the right side. And so to hit the next trigger, you actually need a big climb animation. So there's like a little climb that you can get here and there's a big climb. This right here, this is the big climb. If you don't get that animation, you haven't hit the trigger. So make sure that you get that animation. And then once you're here, you're gonna wanna, uh, it, it'll look really spooky because you can't see anything, but just stick to the right side here. There's a wall that you can't get past. Just stick to the wall and you'll be fine. You usually dash here and I'm gonna jump again. And then once we're here, continue up onto the ceiling here. I'll now show you what you need to do in the event that you don't end up on top of the ceiling there before continuing to the segment. So if you end up over here, you sometimes might land on, on the outside of the room over here. And if that does happen, you'll just come over here. And what you're going to be looking for is you're going to uh, be kind of using this little mound right here as a reference. So I'm going to jump from here and I'm going to dash kind of in an arc. So I'll go like this. And that'll get me right here, which is where I need to be. So this will get you in the in the spot where you can do the big, the big climb again, and then big climb again, and then you'll come up along this corner up onto this ceiling here. Now, once you get to this ceiling here, you'll just run across it. I'm usually dashing for this portion, and then you're going to want to get to the edge right here. So there's one final trigger that you need to hit, and it's uh, in it's right there where you see that little trash can. This part could be pretty dangerous because there's lots of little areas where you can get stuck in this wall. What I'll usually do is I'll run with my camera kind of diagonal down like this, and then once I see the this room appear in my uh, field of vision, I'm going to jump, and I'm going to dash uh, right when I get about to the top of the room here, and then dash again. And that usually allows me to get in pretty handily. Um, the reason that I do this, the reason I do this double dash strategy is because I'll use this to kind of stop myself and get in a reading of where my position is, and I'll do the second dash when I know I'm at a position that's safe enough to dash through. You can get caught inside this little thing right here, and this is what usually gets you stuck out of bounds so be careful of that you'll know that you hit all the necessary triggers when you come into this room here and uh, the lights are usually flashing they probably won't oh they are flashing for me cool so uh this guy won't spawn so if you if this guy doesn't spawn you missed a trigger so make sure you're hitting all the triggers that i showed in the video this next trick is known as boxy mcfloaty <laughs> in line with all of our other naming conventions in this level so once you enter this room 
You're gonna jump over this fence and you'll be dashing here. These boxes in particular have very interesting traits when you shoot them. Normally, if you were picking them up, you wouldn't be able to walk inside of them. They'd just kind of like pop out. But for some reason, if you damage a box, usually by shooting it, and you get inside of it, it will launch you straight upward. We don't know why exactly this happens, but it does. Sometimes it can even push you out of bounds, <laughs> like so. In any case, when you do grab this box, uh, you're going to want to grab it, walk forward, and you'll be inside of it like this. Uh, once you have it right here, you're going to want to jump over this fence. And ideally, you'll keep the box on you like this. This is really tricky because you want to keep the box on the upper half of Jessie's body. When it's on the upper half of her body, she will actually do the rise when you jump like that. But if it's not in that position, you won't rise up. The main thing to keep in mind is that the box in one way or another has to be touching the upper half of Jessie's body. It can be vertical, it can be horizontal, uh, but ultimately you want it touching the upper half of her body. So there are lots of ways to get the box actually uh, onto you. If I need to recorrect my position after bringing the box over here, I'll use this wall right here. And uh, even when the box is on you, you can kind of like move it into objects or the ground to influence it to appear below you, like so. So what I'll usually do is I'll try and get it lined up kind of long ways facing the wall, and then I'll just run into it. And then from there, you can usually kind of influence it on the wall or on other objects to be kind of uh, on top of Jesse's upper torso. And then you, you want to be standing in between these guys, though really anything in this area will work. And then from here, you'll just drop it and then you can jump to make you fly up faster. And then you're up here. And from here, you can just run along this wall until you get to the hotel. This next trick is known as a reach skip or who is a reach because between this skip and the skip at Directorial Override, we never talk to a Reach in this run. So the strategy here, you can either grab this crate and throw it up, or alternatively, you can jump from here to here and then grab the crate right here. You can use the camera to position it around the floor so it doesn't get caught. If you do do it this way though, you're gonna wanna shoot it on the way into the room because this cart has different properties based on whether or not it's destroyed, just like the box. So if you do do this, you're gonna wanna shoot it, then come here then come here, then do this. So, getting out of bounds here for this skip is, uh, at this point in time, very strange and inconsistent. I found a strategy that I use that works most of the time, though I don't have anything right now that works 100% of the time. So generally speaking for this trick, you want the cart kind of like to the front and right of you. You want it up on the pipe like this, and then I'm gonna usually just hold forward and mass jump. You kind of want the cart to be to, to the left and behind you here, so when you throw it, it has a higher chance of pushing you out of bounds, which it almost did here. If you do get stuck in this position, it's not the end of the world. It is possible to uh, uh, to usually grab the cart if you can find the angle, or even just meleeing sometimes can help push you back in bounds. There's lots of different things here that you can do to fix this. So again, that's cart in the front right position, up on the pipe, hold forward, mass jump, throw. And then usually after the throw, I'm going to be holding backwards because I don't want to run out of, I don't want to run off the ledge. I want to run backwards onto safety on top of this little ceiling here, like so. So once you're out of bounds here, you're going to navigate over to this pillar. There's this little pillar that's sticking up right here. You're going to want to hop up on this pillar. Now, once you're here, you're going to be aiming for the left side of this pillar here because there's a big invisible wall that you can't see right now. So I'm going to be jumping and reaching the max height of my jump. And they'll be dashing usually to the left side of the pillar. And from this pillar, you can uh, actually uh, just like mantle, or you can dash again to the right once you get around the invisible wall here, like that. And so this is the wall that shows you about where you need to be aiming on the pillar. So once you're here, you'll be running down to the edge of this wall, and you'll be jumping and mantling over it, and you're gonna be aiming uh, about for that portion of the wall right there. So about like that. And I usually mass jump to make sure I mantle on any sort of walls here. I only like to dash once because I find if I dash twice, uh, Jesse will sometimes kind of dash along the wall and you'll fall back in bounds. So once you're here, there's another pillar right here. You'll jump up on this and you'll jump dash, jump dash. And then uh, for once you're here, you'll be jumping jumping and dashing to there. Again, hold mass jump so that you are able to get up on the, pil uh, the platforms. And then once you get right here, there's another raised platform on the right side. You're just going to run, you're going to run across it. And so now is where you have to be a little bit careful. There's a part of the wall that you want to be aiming for when you're falling back in bounds. You want to go a little bit far to the right here, and then you drop down. You're going to be aiming. Um, the best way to describe it is in between, on the opposite side of this wall, uh, this little vent here, and this guy right here. 
So to show that again, I usually do the dash twice to help myself get the lineup uh, properly. So it'll be right here. There you go. And that is a reach skip. This skip here is going to skip walking across this bridge and then around to get to the elevator there. As soon as you exit the door here after talking to Langston, you just want to dash. And ideally you'll just break the fence right here. And there's this little ring that you can run across the entire way to get over to the fence there. So you just want to be a little bit careful with your dashes here, but you can look pretty far to the left and do a dash and not fall off the ledge. Getting in as many dashes as possible is ideal. And then once you're here, uh, you would just jump over to the elevator here. You normally wouldn't have levitate here, but I have it uh, just for the purpose of the tutorial. So now we have what is simply known as face of the enemy skip. This is the first really big out of bounds skip in the game. And by, by really big, I mean really big. Let's cut this mission down to about three minutes. So you're gonna blow up that forklift and you're gonna bring the chassis part in here. And now we have levitate, which makes this game uh, kind of broken wide open with all the out of bounds mechanics. So you'll pick up the forklift here. You're gonna, gonna kind of get into this back corner, walk back into it and then put the forklift above you like so. You don't have to be exactly in the corner, but I do find this is more successful when you are kind of toward the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to levitate and then when I'm inside the forklift, I'm going to drop it and I'm going to kind of move back and forth and eventually it will uh, push me out of bounds, if not instantly. So we'll fly up, drop it and boom. It's pretty free if you do it at that location and it pushes you directly out of bounds. So now we're out of bounds and what I like to do here right at the start is I'll just kind of levitate and then drop because I find that it kind of clears this weird invisible ceiling that's above you. It's really hard to explain. So now the padding for this is all very, very specific. So pay, pay close attention here. What I'll usually do here is I will sprint and then levitate. I'll do, I'll do some dashes in between here, but I'll land on the floor right there and then I'll jump again. So I land on these last two kind of like panels, I guess, right here. And you'll see the big text fly up on the screen. Your next goal is going to be on top of this, uh, I guess you'd say rooftop right here. So you'll dash over here. And then once you're here, uh, the next thing is going to be this little elevator. You'll see it'll kind of load in. And so you'll jump off here. I usually like to dash instantly. Otherwise, you'll sometimes end up uh, inside this little like bridge that's right there. So once you're on the elevator, this is probably the trickiest part of the skip. There's a trigger that you need to hit that is right down there in that red room. So you'll want to do a slow fall down here. And then once you get here at the right time, when you hit the bottom, you just want to press jump once. You only you only need to press it once. So you get here and you press jump. I'll usually hold back and away from the wall, as you'll see on the no board there. You can kind of tell when you're going to hit it too, because uh, Jesse will kind of like move forward a little bit at the very end. And so I'll hold backwards. And from there, I want to be landing just to the left of this wall. Literally right there. If you go any farther left, you'll probably clip and bounce. So you want to land about right here. And once you're here, you'll do a full jump. Look to the right and mantle here. And then from here, I usually run until I hit this little invisible wall. There's a little like post here. So once I'm here, I'll... Uh, this is going to be three quick uh, mantles in a row. So it's a mantle, hold left, mantle, turn to the right, mantle. And then once I get here, uh, I'll run forward. And our next goal is that right there. So I'm going to uh, jump here. And I'll just dash over to this corner. Now once you're here, uh, you can sprint along the left side of this building. Once we get here, your point of reference is going to be this little, uh, I don't know what you'd call this, this little siren, a little flashing light right here. So I'm going to get about down to right here and there's two different ways you can do this once i'm in position next to the light you can wait right here for the level to load in you can just kind of fall down uh, your point of reference is going to be that little thing right there that'll usually tell you you don't want to go any farther left than that otherwise you'll fall out of bounds so you can just land here and then from here you can jump forward and then just kind of fly forward straight across and you're wanting to land right here alternatively from this point you can skip having to land there so i'll usually fly really high up here and I'm going to be really conscious of my energy level. So I'm going to get uh, about down to the light. And then once I get to the light, I'll kind of like dash here. And I'm just going to go straight across. And that'll put you right here. So it's a little bit more risky if you don't understand the uh, geometry around the level. But also it's faster. And once you're there, you're going to fly across this kind of, I don't know what you'd call this. This set of squares. You can use that little uh, beam of light as a reference. And you'll be landing right here. Just all the way across there. And I'm, I'm just usually going to run along this little wall here. 
I'll take a dash to the left, and then once I get here, I'm going to use this little light as a reference and this little thing as a reference. And so uh, uh, this part's pretty tricky um, because you want to make sure that you hit the trigger on the uh, this final trigger on the left side here. So from here, I'm going to jump up and I'm going to do uh, one, two, three dashes forward. I'm going to hold front left and I'm going to keep holding front left until I see that little thing appear right there. That's going to indicate to me that uh, I've went far enough left and you can just dash straight into the wall right here. And normally if you hit all the triggers, that will appear on the door right there. That's the uh, that's the reference that you successfully uh, hit all the triggers. So for finished tango, it begins with a skip uh, with a setup that will be almost identical to what we use in the next level. Make sure that you have uh, levitate and ground slam here, or you can upgrade energy if you want, up to you. I usually take Levitate Ground Slam. You're going to be using this fridge and one of these inlets in the ceiling to get out of bounds. Uh, the trick here is going to be to have the fridge be beneath you and then have it kind of push you out of bounds. So you're going to want to be looking down with it right here. And you can be jumping off it again. Um, I'll, I'll usually try and jump off it a second time or a, a jump off it to kind of help it push me out of bounds. Um, I find it's easier when the uh, open side of the fridge is facing you, though it is possible to do it with the, with the uh, other side. Usually when this side's facing, I have a much easier time getting out of bounds because you can just kind of jump off of it there. Um, once you do get out of bounds, be careful because you can fall down into that area. So I'm going to usually try and stay to the right so I get up on this platform here. Then once I'm here, you're going to come straight across and you'll jump from here and you can actually dash straight through the wall here. And once you're through the wall, um, I'm going to be looking for the ground slam on the floor here. And I'm going to land before the little break in the bridge here, because there's a trigger that you need to hit right here. And once you get through here, this will lead us directly to uh, the next segment. So make sure you get the trigger right here. When Ati says broke, that'll let you know that you hit the trigger. And that will be going to quarry entrance for another out of bounds skit. So this one's a little bit complicated. So we have another forklift that we'll be using. So you can explode really any of these around here. Fortunately, there's a lot. We'll grab the chassis. And we're going to fly up here onto the black, uh, the black rock quarry sign. From here, I find the best way to do this is kind of similar to the Nomasi skip. We're going to be kind of bringing this around on the right side and then have it appear above us like so. I'm going to walk underneath it. And I'm going to fly up and drop it. And then as soon as I drop it, I'm going to turn around and do a 180 and then instantly dash forward. And the reason I want to do that is because if you don't get out of there, you'll actually just fall back in bounds. You want to be careful too. If you do like fall down and you can't really move around, you can jump again and you'll still be out of bounds. So the reference I'm going to use when I turn around is going to be that little kind of beacon of light right there. That's the main thing. So you can safely land here, but mostly you just want to make sure that you get out of bounds instantly. So now where we're going to be going, if you look on the minimap, at the very top left of the minimap, there's the three question marks. That is our end destination. And you can see us with a little red arrow, kind of more toward the center of it. So what I'll be doing here is I'm usually going to, uh, I'll usually just drop down below this little rock right here. And I'm just going to dash forward, just expend all my dashes. Now we're just floating. And you can use the minimap to reference for you. Um, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to come in low enough here. I don't want to be too high up when I clip back and bounce. And I usually kind of want to be a little bit farther into the room. I don't want to come in at the corner because there's a lot of pipes. So you can, I usually use this for reference here. And you can just dash forward. Boom. And you're in. So once you press this button, a, a timer seems to begin for the trigger for the end of the level. So that guy will appear. Once I get here, I'm going to fly up onto this little uh, overhang here. And we'll go dash, dash. And we're going to wait for our energy to refill. And then we're going to expend all of our dashes. For some reason, I don't have the right stuff equipped. It's fine. There we go. Then we're going to use all of our dashes again. Or most all of them. Basically, uh, you'll have more dashes than I had here. You just want to get on top of this thing. You usually have eight dashes here. That's the minimum you want. And so we're waiting for this kind of timer to cease so that we can activate the trigger that's present on that platform. So everything I'm doing here is just kind of helping me keep track of the soonest possible time I can activate the trigger. So I'm going to ride this little thing past this uh, kind of middle segment here where it's wide open. 
Um, I'm going to kind of wait for some fog to appear. Like right there when you see the fog shift, that's going to determine to me that I can move the cart back now. And so I'll wait a little bit. And then once we're right here, um, I'll just do a sprint and then a, uh, I'll just hold jump. And if you hold jump off the ledge, Jessie will uh, do her little levitate boost. Then I'll dash over here. You can use slam if you want, you don't have to. And uh, from here, I'm gonna run over. I, I just kind of like touch this. I don't know if you, I don't know, you can probably go a little bit faster than this, but. And then from here, I'm gonna dash to the left until I cross over this pillar and the lighting changes like that. And then I'll dash back. This looks really roundabout, but this is the main consistent way where I get the trigger. And if you look in the bottom right corner behind my no board layout, you see that I just got the collectible. That indicates that you've hit the trigger. And from here on out, you can just go and finish the level. This is one of the final and probably one of the most iconic skips in the run. You're going to want to make sure you get your final upgrades. I upgrade energy to four here and health to one. And this is the same skip setup as, for, as finish Tango, but it ends a bit differently. You can see how sometimes you just have to kind of send it at the corner there for it to let you out of bounds. So once you get here, you're going to fly up. I'm going to dash twice. I'm going to kind of get myself in the middle of the wall here. And once I'm in the middle of the wall, uh, for when you stop levitating, it's going to shoot you forward. And you can actually jump or shoot you upward. You can actually jump to make this go faster. So here I am. We are effectively on top of the fire break now, as crazy as that is. This is probably one of the biggest single skips in the game. So now I'm going to angle myself kind of uh, up and to the left here. We're going to jump and levitate. And now I'm going to keep my mini map open. I'm just going to start dashing. And if you look at the hash marks on the minimap here, I'm going to stay uh, kind of just below that top hash mark, but not too far down because I don't want to hit the ashtray maze. We are skipping the entire ashtray maze with this, so I just use my little, the little red arrow on the minimap as a reference, and we're going to go all the way across here. And then once we get closer to the second fire break, I'm actually going to start going a little bit farther down. So once we get about right here, I'm going to start angling back toward the fire break just a little bit. Now once I get here, I'll usually drop the mini-map and start looking downwards so I know when exactly I cross into the room. There we are. Okay, and so once you're here, you want to get above the door, usually around the middle section right here, and from here you can just drop. And then uh, the door will start to open. You have to make sure you're really high up and then drop down over the, over the, uh, the bridge there. And that is Ashtray Skip. All right, so the next uh, skips, you can say, come right after you hit the projector here during take control. So once you get here, you're gonna jump off. I'm gonna keep my, amra my camera aimed downward, so that way I can get these enemies to spawn in below me here. Uh, I don't want them to spawn near where we're doing the skip, so they'll all spawn right there. And a, a important thing to keep in mind here is you're gonna want to have at least eight dashes, uh, ideally nine. Um, I have an energy evade cost and an energy bonus. I usually always have these equipped here. So once you get onto this pillar here, you can jump and I'm gonna uh, just expend all my dashes here. I'm gonna be looking right toward where Dylan is right there. And now once I get here, I'm gonna look downward just so I have an idea of where I am or rather when the platform's coming up and I'm just using all my dashes as soon as they're available. Now you'll see the next set spawn in right here, and I'm going to try and uh, keep dashing left and right, so that when this one comes up, it's going to kind of put me on the very top. There we go. That way you don't fall through the floor. And now once you get here, this is the really critical part. This is the really, really tricky one. So you're, you're going to want to wait till you have at least almost full energy. Okay, and then this one's really care this one's really tight, so watch carefully. So once we get here, I'm going to go jump, and I'm going to go, uh, when I'm at the full height, dash, dash, and then wait for my energy to refill. And then once it's full, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want to go right underneath that pillar. You land on an invisible floor there, and you can just cut straight through, and this gets you straight to the end of the game. The most important part is going underneath that pillar that you saw there. That'll be your reference of where exactly to go. And then from here, you can finish the game. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you appreciate it. I appreciate you. Shawshank Redemption.